Welcome everyone. This video I'm going to show you how I made this miniature quilt rack. I get a lot of questions on what weight of cardstock that I use. This is my very favorite cardstock. I bought it at Hobby Lobby and I was thrilled that it was 40% off. I will be showing you also how I glue all my layers together. Usually with this weight I'll do four or five layers of cardstock. It just depends upon the piece. Here I'm gluing the inner layers together and the outer layers together and then I will glue those together to make the ends. The inner piece of the end is the one that has the little slits in it. That is a, a guide for me to know where to put the crossbars of the quilt rack. I know it's in my description, but the scale that I'm working in is 116. I live in an apartment, so I don't have room to do 112. I would love to, though. Previously, I used to do a lot of 1-6 scale, but that was way too big for being in an apartment. I would love to work in a smaller scale than 116, but that's just too small for my eyes. I don't think I would be able to see anything. I did three layers of the inside of the quilt rack end, so I'm finishing that up right now. And now I'm gluing the outer quilt rack end to the inner quilt rack end. I have two layers for the outer part of the quilt rack end and two for the inside that are just kind of a decorative bottom to the stand. Adds a little bit of thickness to the end of the quilt stand. Now I'm going to be gluing them to the quilt stand. When I'm finished with this end of the quilt rack, I will just repeat all of the steps as I did with this one. I will do two of the outer quilt rack ends and three of the inner quilt rack ends, and then the two layers of the little decorative piece for the outer and the inner of the stand. I had planned to do four layers of the support bars, but I my measurement on my little slits must be off. So I'm just gonna do three layers. It'll be it'll still be strong enough. So I'm just tossing that extra layer aside. And then I finish gluing three layers of each of the support beams. There are four total support bars. And here I'm just sanding all of the rough edges, just softening everything. Every time I do a voiceover and I talk about the sanding, it reminds me of one of my earlier videos I actually said sharpen the edges instead of sand the edges. I don't know why, but that just makes me laugh. I'm so glad I caught that mistake. Here I'm doing a thin layer of Mod Podge on all of the pieces. 
And now I'm doing a very thin layer of the apple, I think it's Anita's or Apple Barrel Latte as a base. And then I'm doing a wash of, I believe it is Mo Anita's Moccasin to, to start the wood tone. I just love that as a paint color name, Moccasin. I did add a little water to the moccasin too. I just wanted to thin it down some. And now I'm applying a dark brown water wash to give me some more wood grain. And now I'm dirtying it up with some chalk pastels. I have black and brown mixed together. Here I'm gluing the support bars onto one end of the quilt rack and I'm using those little slits that I made as a guide and also to give the glue a little something to hang on to. I'm taking the end of my toothpick and I'm wiping away the glue that has oozed out when I placed the support bars in. And then I let it dry completely before I try to glue it to the other end of the quilt rack. And now I'm applying glue to the little slits in, on the other end of the quilt rack instead of putting the glue on the end of the support bars. I figure that way when I go to match them up, they won't be smearing glue all over. Because it is a little fiddly trying to get all four of those into their little spots. But I did it. I managed to get them all in. Just using a toothpick now to clean up all the glue that has oozed out. And now it's complete. Thank you so much again for subscribing. Thank you for watching. See you soon.